So I'm Lakshmi Guru, a PhD candidate, and as well as a sectional lecturer in the School of Electrical and Biomedical Engineering and of Queensland University of Technology, Brisbane, Australia. And first of all, first of all let me thank the coordinator, Professor Anup Vasavan, as well as the EC department staffs and students, as well as the management of Mahaguru Institute of Technology for giving me an opportunity to present my research work, which is flexible capacity pressure sensors. So, yeah. Now let me just in, just introduce myself uh, to you with some personal information. So I am Lakshmi. I'm a native of Mahavirikera, and I have done my schooling from Bishop Moor Vidyapeet Mahavirikera as well as Chirgushpa Badani Higher Secondary School Mahavirikera. And for my higher studies, I just have done my Bachelor's of Technology in electronics and communication from Sri Buddha Project of Engineering, as well as masters from in electronics and communication itself from Anna University of Bhaimbatur. And after completing my masters, I just selected teaching as my career and worked as assistant professor for five years in the Department of Electronics and Communication at Royal College of Engineering Technology, as well as a few months at Archana College of Engineering. And after that, I just came abroad in 2018 and have started my PhD with the Faculty of Science and Engineering at Queensland University of Technology. And thus here my journey has, is going with PhD. So I'll just move on to the topic. So just as an introduction, I'll just start with flexible electronics. So since an electronics and communication engineering students would be having an idea what's a flexible electronics or what are flexible electronics, right? So I'll just give a brief idea. So it would be just a surface idea of about this flexible electronics to just give an introductory talk uh, and just going deep into the main topic, right? So flexible electronics. So flexible electronics is a branch or, or, or a subclass of electronic devices which are made up of flexible substrates. That is, it's made up of substrates which can be conformal or it's stretchable in nature, right? So, <clears throat> so we know, know that there are many substrates. So you, you guys would be knowing what is a substrate, right? So these substrates can either be you know, a paper or plastic or flex glasses. So these things are flexible in nature so that we can use in our day-to-day -day life as well as in applications. So when compared to our, you know, the traditional or else the rigid counterparts, now the flexible electronics are having a higher demand due to its size. That is, it's having a miniaturized size as well as size, as well as weight. That is, these are of ultra light weightedness as well as energy conversion, because energy conversion is an important factor that electronics need to de deal with while fabricating devices. So these are having a higher energy conversion and a higher energy efficiency as well. So now, now in our daily day-to-day -day life, we can see flexible electronics in everything. For example, from the figure itself, we can see it, it has occupied space in memories, in telecom, medical applications such as you know sensors, e-skin, etc. In displays, the mobile that you use are having um, ele flexible electronics displays. The sensors that you used for um, for sensing devices in agriculture areas as well as in biomedical areas, everything, as well as cells where we use for you know uh, for studying the internal body or, or body structures or internal body processes so we use uh, we, we mimic uh, the cells in the form of flexible electronics so now moving on to the history so just giving a small idea about the history of flexible electronics so from the picture it's clear that the flexible electronics has been started in the year 1970 until now it's been continued right so it has been something like five decades or 50 years since we have been in the world of flexible electronics so the flexible electronics has been first coming with the flexible solar cells, which has been fabricated on thin silicon wafers. And now it has been moved a long way. And now we are using even paper for using for, for, for fabricating paper-based glucose sensors for saliva detections or self-powered sweat sensors. So as shown in the figure. So recently the most 
the most uh, the re the most recent flexible sensor or de devices that the scientists have discovered is an electronic skin that be that can be attached to the throat which which can monitor a real time uh, measurement of the you know the talking the talking signals or the uh, the breathing signals as well as other small vital signals and now scientists has been customizing the same device to detect or to spot the COVID symptoms. So if it becomes a success in our real world, it would be really a promising invention. So hope it can happen. So now moving on to smart devices. You all know smart devices, right? So because in most of the homes now, uh, now it has, now all the homes have been upgraded to smartphones. So we all know smart devices. So, so just for an awareness, I'll just, Tell what a smart device is. A smart device is a device which is a collaboration of small, small devices to form a single device which is being connected with each other through something like wireless protocols, which can either be Bluetooth or any LAN protocol or Wi-Fi or anything like that. So each of the smart device consists of small, small smart systems, which consist of so uh, which consist of the uh, which consists of an input sensing unit a processing unit as well as an output or a driving unit so the input sensing unit the input for a sensing unit can either be a in any form any form of energy that is a mechanical form or an optical form or a thermal form or any form of energy which is being sensed by the input device and processed into electrical devices and we get an output also in for in any form it can be either thermal or electric or electrical or mechanical or any form of energy so thus the output can be in terms of power or in terms of energy so most of the applications of these smart systems comes under uh, comes under the application areas of smart systems that is it can use can be used as wearable devices either either as wrist you know e skin it can be you might be have heard about the electronic skin right which can be uh, which can be used as e skin as as be used as prosthetics or robotics implants in brains or else breast and energy harvesting in terms of solar cells as well as batteries in portable devices that is smart watches that we, we wear as well as in communication um, applications that is antennas or or something like that and all these comes in a simple umbrella known as the ultra thin chips or the flexible electronics so whatever device we fabricate for smart devices all are comes under the simple umbrella known as ultra thin chips or the flexible electrons and all these single single devices are connected to one another to form and to one another and this forms the future applications which can which can be which can be named as internet of things or mobile healthcare or in smart cities there are many smart homes uh, which are connected by the smart devices so hence we have just went through an introduction of the of the flexible electronics and our sensor our flexible capacitive sensor falls under this flexible electronics which is just the sensing unit or the input or the input of a of a smart device or input of a device so now moving on to the topic that's a flexible pressure sensor now you all might be knowing what's a transducer right since electronics and communication students you might be knowing what's a transducer so I'll just give a small brief idea about a transducer. So transducer is an electronic device which transforms one form of energy into another form of energy, right? So for example, a microphone. For example, just take an example as our phone or the mobile phone that we use. So if we get an incoming call, we just take it and answer it. So it's having a microphone and at the same time, it's having a loudspeaker so that we can hear it, right? So there is an input so the sound signal which is being collected by the input device so the microphone collects the sound signal so the sound signal is collected by the input device and is converted into an electrical signal so that it's being processed so it can either be an amplifier or be a rectifier or any any electronic device which processes the signal. so the electronic devices processes the signal and converts that electrical signal signal into an electrical signal itself and gives to the output device and this output device converts this incoming electrical signal into an output signal, which can either be in the form of sound signal or mechanical signal or thermal signal or anything. 
So this a transducer consists of two main devices, that is an input device, which is a sensor, and an output device, which is an actuator. So this output device, which is an actuator, would be having an input electrical signal and an output, that is any other form of signal other than this electrical signal. So hope you might be having a small idea of what is a sensor and an actuator and how these both together form a transducer. Right? So just moving on to the next is the sensor. That is just the input portion. So just the input portion of the transducer from the sensor. So in our terms, it's a flexible pressure sensor. So from the heading itself, we can see that it's flexible in nature and it senses a pressure applied on it so the pressure is a mechanical deformation right so a mechanical pressure is applied on the device or the sensing unit and into which an electrical a corresponding electrical signal is obtained at out so here we are fabricating a sensor which is flexible in device which which collects the mechanical pressure applied on it and converts the converts the mechanical pressure into a corresponding electrical signal so I'll just give a brief idea about this flexible pressure sensors which are available uh, you know in this world or or in the literature so flexible pressure sensors based on the pressure region of operations can be classified into four types that is ultra low pressure region subtile pressure region low pressure region and medium pressure region so ultra low pressure region lies in the ratio in the ratio in the region of less than one pascal so less than one pascal is very negligible pressure so so the sound signals that we, we, we hear uh, or the, uh, that we produce falls under this ultra low pressure so here comes the microphone and the hearing aids which operates under low pressure region so next is a subtile pressure region which falls under one pascal to one kilopascal so here the touch screen that we used for mobiles and even for tabs, iPads, and every sort of things, falls under the subtile pressure region. So, so since it's a, it's just a gesture that's a touch, so a low pressure is applied on it. And next is electronic skin. Electronic skins. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Ah oh, yes. Okay. Okay. So, so next is electronic skin. So, electronic skins are just a replica of our human skin, which is which is fabricated by the scientists uh, for, you know, for humans or 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 animals even uh, can be replaced with electronic skin for further studies for biological signals or weak signal detections. So next is a low pressure region, which uh, which is between the region of 1 to 10 kilopascal. So there comes the daily activities and most of our biological signals, that's her, that is health rate monitoring devices. So you all might be having a smartwatch with you, right, which measures the heart rate and all sort of things, right? So this smart device, which we fabricate for monitoring the health conditions, falls under or detects the low pressure region, which falls under the 1 to 10 kilopascal. And most of the activities, day-to-day -day activities that we do also falls under the low pressure region. So most of the scientists or the most of the researchers focus on fabricating devices which works under the low pressure region as most of the day-to-day -day human activities as well as physiological signals uh, produce pressure of that range. So that's why I'm, I myself is also focusing on that pressure region of something like 1 to 10 kilopascal for, for fabricating my devices. And lastly, it's a medium pressure uh, pressure region that is between 10, uh, 10 to 100 kilopascal. That is, uh, it's the high, uh, it's almost the high pressure region, which we can be, uh, which can be detected in higher al high altitudes. And as well as, you know, um, as well as the the pressure which we apply to the food that is the planar pressure because the food is the is the only organ that carries the whole body weight so the weight on the food would be higher so it, it comes under the medium pressure region so now moving on to the to the other classification of pressure flexible pressure sensors based on the transduction principle or the transducing principle so firstly the flexible pressure sensors are of something like three types Actually, it's four types, but I'm, I'll be focusing or, or just uh, giving you an idea about three types. So first one is a piece of resistive pressure sensors. So from the from the name, what we can see, 
it's piezo resistive piezo means pressure resistive means resistance right so when so from the name we can get an idea that when pressure is applied some resistance change is being happening right so what happens is that these piezo resistive pressure sensors works on the principle of piezo resistive effect that is when a pressure is applied on the material the interatomic spacing changes between the atoms and this deformation causes a change in the interatomic distance and this and what happens as the interatomic distance changes the band gap between between the atoms reduces so this the conduction band and the balance balance band comes close to each other this this accelerates more electrons to jump into the conduction band from the balance band so what happens when electrons jumps from the balance band to the conduction band so as electrons more electrons jumps from the balance band to the conduction band the current flow increases the, reducing the resistance so in piezo resistive pressure sensors so the ultimate effect is that as pressure is applied on the material the band gap reduces electrons jumps from the balance band to the conduction band and hence the resistance reduces so the pressure is being converted into a resistance or a resistance parameter you know so the main advantage the so the main advantage of these type of resistance is that these are simple and low cost fabrication and it's having a higher response time so when we apply a pressure it instantaneously converts uh, when we apply a pressure that pressure is instantaneously being, being being converted into a variation in resistance so the limitation is that it is it's having a high power consumption and the sensitivity of the device depends upon the temperature so if the sensitivity of the device depends upon the temperature then then you know the temperature variation affects the sensitivity so it won't be uh, applicable in most of the applications for example you know for the internal body applications and all so now moving on to the next type of sensor is a piezo electric pressure sensor you are might be having an idea of a piezo electric pressure sensor right i think so so in a piezo electric pressure sensor so piezo electric pressure sensor for the fabrication of piezo electric pressure sensors usually we use anisotropic materials so you guys would be thinking what is an anisotropic material since it's something like chemistry so i'll just give an idea what is an anisotropic material so an anisotropic so there are generally two types of materials isotropic materials and anisotropic materials isotropic means same tropic iso means same right so isotropic materials are materials which are having the same physical properties that is the refractive index resistance and all sort of things in all the directions for example it's a glass so if we, if we just place a piece of glass uh, across the sun rays what 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 we can see the sun rays would be evenly piercing through the glass right so without any you know deviation there would be a uh, that the glass would be allowing the sunlight to come through it whereas in anisotropic material and anisotropic material is that it is not isotropic in nature that is it that is the physical properties of the material would be changing throughout the direction so that for example i'll just take a paper so if we just put a paper in in the place a paper in sunrise what happens is that in some portions sun rays would be would, we can see sun rays piercing out while as in other portions there might not be this is because of the irregularity of the molecules within that material so glass is having a glass is having a homogeneous distribution of the molecules whereas paper is having an irregular or non homogeneous distribution of the molecules that is why it is termed anisotropic and glass is termed isotropic so piezo electric uh, pressure sensors can be fabricated only using anisotropic materials because it would be having uh, that is the charges which are randomly distributed so when we place a piece of electric material between two electrodes and we apply a current what happens or and and we apply a pressure what happens is that an electric field the electric field applied it causes the el causes the charges to move in such a way that electric dipoles are formed so that polarization occurs and electric dipoles are formed so these electric dipoles align in such a way that they create a potential between the two electrodes so one electrode becomes positive and the other becomes negative so that you know the potential difference is created in proportional to the applied pressure so we can say that as pressure is 
as, as we introduce pressure or pressure is applied on the material, it creates a self-powering ability or it generates a self-powering ability. So the piezoelectric materials can create a self-power when pressure is applied on it. So the most advantage of this, of this is that it's low power consumption and it's having a faster rate when compared to that of piezoresistive ones. But the only limitation is that the temperature depends upon the output. The, the, the output is temperature dependent and also as voltage is the output or the potential difference is the output, we require extra hardware for, for extracting this output signals out or such as amplifiers or something because the, the voltage uh, created across these two electrodes would be very less and we need, just need an amplifier to amplify it and get connected to collect it so you know as we use extra hardware the, the the device would be going a bit bulkier so the cost of production would be higher so that's the drawback of piezoelectric though it is self-powered ones so third one is the capacity pressure sensors the capacity pressure sensors as we know it can be made using any material nah, neither as isotropic or anisotropic and it simply works on the parallel on the principle of parallel plate capacitance you might be knowing this equation c is equal to epsilon a by d that is capacitance is directly proportional to the area of the substance between the two electrons and inversely proportional to the distance between the two electrons or the thickness of the material right so in the capacity pressure sensors what happens is that as force is applied on the on, on one one end that is as force is applied on it this material that is placed this dielectric material that is placed between the two electrodes just pushes down right it compresses down so so as it compresses down the distance between the two electrodes decreases so as d decreases c increases that is the capacitance increases so that is the is the main main thing or the main principle that is used in the capacity pressure sensors now the advantage of capacity pressure sensors that is it's simple and robust in nature it's low power consumption it provides a moderate sensitivity irrespective of the environment change that is the sensitivity that it provides doesn't depend upon the temperature or any or humidity or anything but the only limitation is that it's having a low sensitivity so when compared to piezo resistive and piezo electric devices or pressure sensors, they provide a higher sensitivity, but their sensitivity depends upon the temperature. But here, the sensitivity that they give, that this provide doesn't depend upon anything or any environmental changes, but it's low, low. So, so now, work is being done on capacity pressure sensors to increase or boost the sensitivity, right? So for increasing the sensitivity, scientists are, scientists have, or, or from the literature, from the literature review, we, we can find two methods that the scientists have done to, or the researchers have done to improve the sensitivity. First one is that, is to modify the material. That is to modify the dielectric material, which is being used or sandwiched between the two electrodes. Or either one is that, is to it's a structural modification of the material. So the structural modification of the material means the, the structure of the material is being modified whereas in the first one modifying the material internally that is the composition of the material is being modified so either modifying the composition of the material or modifying the structure of the material or going for both so now the study is being done like that so that we can get a higher sensitivity higher sensitive capacity pressure sensors when compared to piezo resistive and piezo electric ones so We'll just go with the first one, that is modifying the material. So modifying the material means, so yeah, I'll just uh, tell you, for since we are, uh, we are fabricating flexible pressure sensors, so the dielectric material which we use between the two electrodes should be flexible in nature, right? So flexible in nature, so usually we used polymers, you know, you might be knowing polymers, right? Polymers polymers that is a, a kind of plastic which can be squeezed which we can squeeze in nature which is squeezable in nature right so polymers are generally used so these polymers can either be polar polymers so i'm not going deep into the chemistry because you guys are electronics so i'm not though i'm also electronics but for, for my research work i have studied a bit of chemistry so i'm not discussing all the chemistry you will be feeling, feeling bored so i'll just uh, just tell these polymers can be, isot uh, can be polar or non-polar, let it be 
anything. So this polar, when combined with some conductive fillers, conductive fillers can be either, you know, uh, the carbon derivatives or graphene, because, you know, uh, these conductive fillers increases the conductivity. When we mix these conductive fillers into polymers to form conductive po polymer composites. So, you know, as such, if we use a polymer itself for sandwiching between two electrodes, it gives a lower sensitivity when compared when compared to using a conductive polymer composite. So since uh, this, com uh, this conductive fillers are present within the material, it increases or enhances the conductivity of the material. So next one is the structural modification of the material. So structural modification means introducing modified structures for the dielectric. So, so there are different methods for, for introducing modified structures. The, fun, the first one is a natural plant-based structure. That is, it's a natural structure. Uh, yeah, I'll just give an example. You might be knowing lotus leaves, right? So not, lotus leaves, as you as you look as such, we can't see the small hair-like structures which is on, which is present on the surface of it. But on a micro on a microscopic view, we can see that the lotus leaves are hydrophobic in nature. That is, it doesn't allow water water to settle down on it. Hydrophobic in nature, and they have they have small hairs or pillar-like structures. So. So most of the scientists or, or those who would like to mimic, you know, biomimic structures, they would take lotus leaves and just pour a polymer on it, solidify it and peel it out so that, you know, we can get uh, a structure of this lotus leaf on this polymer. So this lotus leaves can act as molds to make structured or modified structured dielectric materials. So next is the micro pyramid structures. So micro pyramid structures can be fabricated using molds and micro needle or pillar structures also can be used using molds so hope you would be know you knowing what is a mold is right so yeah mold is means malayalathil njan parayane acha nakka nammal kettittille appo ipo ipo micro pillars undakkanam nanengil nammal agathu nalla pillar pole kuriyulla acha undakkum ennittu adinathirode nammal polymer odikkum ennittu adine solidify cheyittu nammal eduthu kariyumbo adinathile pillar structures aanu manasilaya appo adu pole Similarly, for micro needles and down, so micro domes, micro porous structures. So micro porous structures, there, there would be pores within the material. So the material is not a good thing. Then the same thing is these holes, these micro pores, these micro pores would be empty spaces within the material and these pores would be filled with air. So air I reckon. So as air is present within the material, the dielectric property changes and this enhances the sensitivity. Now, so in my project, so uh, so in my project, uh, since I was uh, mainly for uh, fabricating my pressure sensors for biomedical applications, I, have a fo I was focusing on something like uh, a pressure range of 1 to 10 kilopascal. And I just went with capacity pressure sensors because, you know, the, the sensitivity is temperature or environment independent. And um, I just thought of uh, going with composite or conduct uh, conductive uh, polymer composites because it's having a higher uh, higher conduct sensitivity and i just used micro porous structures that is a dielectric with some holes in it micro porous structures to enhance the sensitivity so uh since i told that i have used a conductive polymer composite and we have many conductive fillers available in the market such as you know graphene nanoplatelets graphene nano powder uh, even reduced graphene oxide sheets and carbon derivatives and many sort of things. So I just focus with graphene because, you know, it's one of the promising fact, uh, promising material that now researchers use because of its high conductivity. So so since I uh, planned of using graphene, but only thing that uh, that I was a bit worried was how to introduce this graphene into this porous form. So yeah, how to introduce this graphene into this porous form was one of my challenge. And this other challenge was, if I introduce graphene in any of the forms, in any of the ways, how it would affect the performance when we make it into a capacity pressure sensor. So first, first for studying this one, I just thought of introducing graphene in three different ways. That is, I just fabricated a porous form. That is a form with microstructures or a form, spongy, spongy. That's form, 
അതുപോലെ ഇരിക്കും നമ്മുടെ ഈ ഡിഷ് വാഷിംഗ് സ്പോഞ്ചസ് ഇല്ലേ ഡിഷ് വാഷിംഗ് അപ്പം അതുപോലെ അത് എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞ പോളി ഡിഷ് വാഷിംഗ് ഫോംസ് എന്ന് പറയുമ്പോൾ പോളി യൂറിത്തിൻ എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞൊരു മെറ്റീരിയലും കൊണ്ട് ഉണ്ടാക്കിയിരിക്കുന്നത് അതല്ലാതെ ഇത് നമ്മുടെ റബ്ബർ പോലൊരു സബ്സ്റ്റൻസും കൊണ്ട് ഉണ്ടാക്കുന്നതാണ് ഈ എന്ന് ഈ ഇവിടുത്തെ ഇപ്പം മൈക്രോ പോറസ് ഫോംസ് ഈ പോറസ് ഫോംസ് നമ്മൾ ഉദ്ദേശിക്കുന്നത് അപ്പൊ ഈ പോറസ് ഫോംസ് നമ്മൾ അറ്റ് ഫസ്റ്റ് അപ്പൊ നമ്മൾ ഗ്രാഫി ഡിഫറെന്റ് വേസ് ഇൻ വിച്ച് പ്ലാനിങ് ടു ഇൻകോപ്പറേറ്റ് ഗ്രാഫി ഇൻ വെർ ഐ കോട്ടിങ് the porous forms with graphene so what happens is that we prepare a graphene form and coat it with graph prepare a porous form and coat it with graphene and the second was that graphene embedded with the polymeric matrix so the other one nor ninya നമ്മൾ ഉണ്ടാക്കുമ്പോൾ തന്നെ സൊല്യൂഷൻ അകത്തിൽ ഗ്രാഫീൻ ഇട്ടിട്ട് നമ്മൾ സോളിഡിഫൈ ചെയ്യും അപ്പൊ എന്താ സംഭവിക്കുന്ന പറഞ്ഞാൽ ഈ റബ്ബറിനകത്തിൽ തന്നെ നമുക്ക് ഗ്രാഫീൻ ഉണ്ടാകും അപ്പൊ ഫസ്റ്റ് കേസ് എന്ന് പറയുമ്പോൾ പോളിമർ നമ്മൾ നമ്മൾ ഫോം ഉണ്ടാക്കിയിട്ടാണ് ഗ്രാഫീനിൽ മുക്കുന്നത് അപ്പൊ എന്താ സംഭവിക്കുന്ന വെച്ച് കഴിഞ്ഞാല് ഈ ഈ ഫോമിന്റെ പോഴ്സിലെല്ലാം ഗ്രാഫീൻ ഇങ്ങനെ ഒട്ടി പിടിച്ചിട്ടിരിക്കും മനസ്സിലായോ രണ്ടാമത്തെ കേസ് എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞു കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ നമ്മൾ ഉണ്ടാക്കുമ്പോൾ തന്നെ മിക്സ് മിക്സ് ആ പോളിമറിക് മിക്സ്ചറിനകത്തിൽ നമ്മൾ ഗ്രാഫിൻ ഇൻട്രൊഡ്യൂസ് ചെയ്യും അപ്പൊ എന്താ സോളിഡിഫൈ ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ ഈ പോർ ഈ ഫോമിനകത്തിലായിരിക്കും ഗ്രാഫിൻ മൂന്നാമത്തത് നമ്മൾ ഉദ്ദേശിച്ച് എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞു കഴിഞ്ഞാല് രണ്ടൂടെ ചെയ്ത് നോക്കാം എന്ന് വെച്ച് കഴിഞ്ഞാല് ആദ്യമേ നമ്മൾ ഒരു ഒരു ഗ്രാഫിൻ അകത്തുള്ള ഒരു ഫോം ഉണ്ടാക്കിയിട്ട് അതിനെ ഗ്രാഫിൻ സൊല്യൂഷനിൽ ഡിപ്പൂടെ ചെയ്യാം എന്ന് വിചാരിച്ചു സോ അങ്ങനെ മൂന്ന് ഡിഫറെന്റ് ടൈപ്സ് ഓഫ് ഫോംസ് ഉണ്ടാക്കി അപ്പൊ ഗ്രാഫിൻ കോട്ടഡ് ഫോം ഉണ്ട് ഗ്രാഫിൻ എംബ്രോയിഡ് ഫോം ഉണ്ട് കോമ്പിനേഷനും ഉണ്ട് സോ ആഫ്റ്റർ ദാറ്റ് വി വെൻ ഫോർ എ കമ്പാരിസ്റ്റീവ് ഇൻവെസ്റ്റിഗേഷൻ ഓഫ് ദ സെയിം മെറ്റീരിയൽ ടു അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡ് ഹൗ ദിസ് ഗ്രാഫിൻ ഹൗ ദിസ് ഡിഫറെന്റ് ടൈപ്സ് ഓഫ് ഗ്രാഫിൻ ഫോംസ് ഇൻഫ്ലുവൻസസ് ദ പെർഫോമൻസ് ഓഫ് എ കപ്പാസിറ്റി പ്രഷർ സെൻസർ സോ ദിസ് ഇസ് ജസ്റ്റ് എൻ എക്സ്പെരിമെന്റൽ മെത്തഡ് യു വുഡ് ബി ഗെറ്റിംഗ് ബോർഡ് വിത്ത് ദിസ് വൺ ഐ ആം ഡാം ഷുവർ ബട്ട് ഐ ജസ്റ്റ് ഗിവൻ ഐ ഐഡിയ യു നോ ബിക്കോസ് ഐ ഹാവ് ജസ്റ്റ് യൂസ് ഷുഗർ ക്യൂബ്സ് സോ സോ യു മൈ ബി നോയിങ് വാട്ട്സ് എ ഷുഗർ ക്യൂബ്സ് റൈറ്റ് നമുക്കറിയാം ഷുഗർ ക്യൂബ് എന്താ നമ്മുടെ കടകളിലൊക്കെ കിട്ടുന്നുണ്ടാവും ഷുഗർ ക്യൂബ്സ് അല്ലെ അതുപോലെ കടകളിൽ നിന്നും മേടിച്ച് കടകൾ ഇവിടുത്തെ ഒരു കടയിൽ നിന്ന് വാങ്ങിച്ച ഷുഗർ ക്യൂബും കൊണ്ടാണ് ഞാൻ എന്റെ ഈ ഫോം ഉണ്ടാക്കിയിരിക്കുന്നത് അല്ലെ എന്റെ ഈ സെൻസർ ഉണ്ടാക്കിയിരിക്കുന്നത് കേട്ടോ അപ്പം സോ അറ്റ് ഫസ്റ്റ് ദ ഫിഗർ എ റെപ്രസെന്റ് ദ ഫാബ്രിക്കേഷൻ ഓഫ് ഗ്രാഫിൻ കോട്ടഡ് വൺസ് സോ ദേ വാട്ട് വി ഹാവ് ഡൺ ഇസ് ദാറ്റ് വി ഹാവ് പർച്ചേസ്ഡ് എ ഷുഗർ ക്യൂബ് ആൻഡ് സാൻഡ് ഇറ്റ് സാൻഡ് ഇറ്റ് ടു എം 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 ത്രീ ആൻഡ് ഫോർ എം എം ഡൈ വിട്ട് അപ്പൊ നമ്മൾ ഷുഗർ ക്യൂബ് കടയിൽ നിന്ന് വാങ്ങിയിട്ട് അതിന് സാൻഡ് പേപ്പർ അല്ലേ സാൻഡ് പേപ്പർ വെച്ചിട്ട് അതിന്റെ സൈസ് റെഡ്യൂസ് ചെയ്തു എന്നിട്ട് ടു എം എമ്മും ഞാൻ സിൻസ് ഐ വാസ് കൺസേൺ വിത്ത് ടു എം എം ആൻഡ് ഫോർ എം എം ഡിവൈസസ് സോ ഐ ജസ്റ്റ് മെയ്ഡ് ഇറ്റ് ടു എം എം ആൻഡ് റീസൈസ് ടു ടു എം എം ആൻഡ് ഫോർ എം എം എന്നിട്ട് ദെൻ ദിസ് ഷുഗർ ക്യൂബ്സ് ബെഡ് ഡിപ് ഡി യു നോ ദ പി ഡി എം എസ് പി ഡി എം എസ് എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞു കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ ഒരു പോളിമർ കേട്ടോ പി ഡി എം എസ് എന്ന് വെച്ച് കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ ഒരു പോളിമർ ആണ് അതിന് പി ഡി എം എസും അതിന് ക്യൂറിംഗ് ഏജന്റും കൂടെ മിക്സ് ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ ഒരു റബ്ബർ പോലാകും ഒരു റബ്ബർ പോളിമർ ആണ് എന്നിട്ട് അതിന് അത് ആ റബ്ബറിനകത്തിലോട്ട് നമ്മൾ ഷുഗർ ക്യൂബ് ഡിപ്പ് ചെയ്തിട്ട് അപ്പൊ എന്താ എന്ത് പറ്റും ഡിപ്പ് ചെയ്തിട്ട് ചൂടാക്കാൻ വെച്ചു ചൂടാക്കാൻ വെച്ചപ്പോൾ എന്താ സംഭവിച്ചേക്കുക എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞു കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ ആ പി ഡി എം എസ് ഈ ഷുഗർ ക്യൂബിനകത്തിൽ കട്ടിയായിട്ടിരുന്നു എന്നിട്ട് ദെൻ സോ സോ ദിസ് ഷുഗർ ഷുഗർ ക്യൂബ് ആക്സസ് കിലിറ്റൺ ഓർ എ ടെംപ്ലേറ്റ് ഫോർ അവർ ഡിവൈസ് ദെൻ വി ഡിസോൾഡ് ദ ഷുഗർ ക്യൂബ് ബൈ ഡിപ്പിങ് ഇറ്റ് ഇൻ വാട്ടർ ഫോർ സംതിങ് ലൈക്ക് ട്വന്റി ഫോർ അവേഴ്സ് സോ വാട്ട് ഹാപ്പൻസ് ഇസ് ദാറ്റ് ഓൺ ഡിസൊല്യൂഷൻ ഓഫ് ദ ഷുഗർ ക്യൂബ് the sh- the sugar particles would be dissolved in water leaving behind pores within the material of the porous pdms form ennittu a porous pdms form ne nammal graphene coat cheyan vendite or graphene solution nathrode dip cheyidu graphene nanoplatelets disperse cheyade or solution nathrode dip cheyidittu onna dip cheyidittu nammal verude or hot plate il vechi choodaaki kayappettenum graphene coat cheyidittu form kittu okay the next one is the graphene embedded
അപ്പൊ നമ്മൾ നമ്മുടെ ലക്ഷ്യം എന്താന്ന് വെച്ച് കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ ഇപ്പൊ ഫസ്റ്റ് വണ്ണത്ത് ഗ്രാഫിൻ കോട്ട് ചെയ്തേക്കുന്ന മാത്രമാവും സെക്കൻഡ് വണ്ണത്ത് ഗ്രാഫിൻ എംബഡ് ചെയ്തേക്കുക മൂന്നാമത്തെ ഇനത്തിൽ ഗ്രാഫിൻ കോട്ട് ചെയ്തിട്ടുണ്ട് എംബഡ് ചെയ്തിട്ട് അപ്പൊ നമ്മൾ എക്സ്പെക്ട് ചെയ്യുന്നതെന്ന് വെച്ച് കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ തിയറട്ടിക്കലി നമ്മൾ എക്സ്പെക്ട് ചെയ്യുന്നത് അപ്പൊ മൂന്നാമത്തെ ഇനായിരിക്കും കൂടുതൽ നല്ല പെർഫോമൻസ് ഉള്ളത് അപ്പം ആ എക്സ്പെക്ടേഷനിലാണ് നമ്മൾ എക്സ്പെരിമെന്റ് ഫുള്ള് ചെയ്യുന്നത് റിസൾട്ടിന് വേണ്ടി അനലൈസ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് ഓക്കെ ഫൈ അപ്പൊ ആദ്യമേ നമ്മൾ ഫോം ഉണ്ടാക്കി അതിനെ ഒരു ഡിവൈസ് ആക്കുന്നതിന് മുമ്പേ അറ്റ് ഫസ്റ്റ് വി ഹാവ് ടു ക്യാരക്ടറൈസ് ദ ഫോം ആ ഫോമിന്റെ എല്ലാ പ്രോപ്പർട്ടീസ് നമ്മൾ ക്യാരക്ടറൈസ് ചെയ്യണം അപ്പൊ ക്യാരക്ടറൈസ് ചെയ്യാൻ വേണ്ടിയിട്ട് അറ്റ് ഫസ്റ്റ് നമ്മളൊരു എന്താ ഒരു എസ് സി എം ഇമേജ് എടുത്തിട്ടുണ്ട് എസ് സി എം ഇമേജ് എന്ന് പറയുമ്പോൾ സ്കാനിങ് ഇലക്ട്രോൺ മൈക്രോസ്കോപ്പി അതിൽ ഒരു ഇമേജ് സ്കാനിങ് ഇലക്ട്രോൺ മൈക്രോസ്കോപ്പിയിൽ ഒരു ഇമേജ് എടുത്തിട്ടുണ്ട് അപ്പൊ നോക്കി ഫിഗർ എ ആൻഡ് ഫിഗർ ബി represents that of the graphene quartered forms c and d represents that of the graphene embedded forms appo namukku kaanan pattum from when comparing figure b and figure d on comparing figure b and figure d we can see that figure d b in figure b the surface of the form seems to be a bit rough this is because of the presence of the graphene flakes so you can see the small 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 things that are present over the surface these are the graphene flakes that coats the surface of the pores whereas in in figure d as graphene is embedded within the matrix of the of the pdms form we can't see the graphene flakes outside so it provides a smooth surface okay now figure e and f shows the ultra light weightedness of the forms so i have just placed the forms on, on the top of a flower so you know a po oru paksha ningal kandittundavu nammal parambil okke ullaru povana അപ്പം നോക്കിക്ക് ആ പൂവ് ഡിസ്പേഴ്സ് ഓൾമോസ്റ്റ് ഡിസ്പേഴ്സ് ആയ ഒരു സിറ്റുവേഷനിലാണ് ആ ഫോൺ അതിന്റെ മേളിൽ പ്ലേസ് ചെയ്തിരിക്കുന്നത് ഈവൻ ദാറ്റ് ദാറ്റ് ഫ്ലവർ കുഡ് ഹോൾഡ് ദാറ്റ് ഫോൺ അപ്പൊ ഒന്ന് നോക്കിയാൽ ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് ദാറ്റ് അൾട്രാ ലൈറ്റഡ് ലൈറ്റ് വെയ്റ്റഡ്നെസ് ആണ് ആ ഫോമിന്റെ നമ്മൾ കാണാൻ പറ്റുന്നത് ഓക്കെ ദ ഫിഗർ ജി ആൻഡ് എച്ച് റെപ്രസെന്റ് ഫിഗർ ജി റെപ്രസെന്റ് ദ ബെൻഡബിൾ നേച്ചർ ഓഫ് ദ ഫോൺ ആൻഡ് ഫിഗർ എച്ച് റെപ്രസെന്റ് ദ ഫോൾഡബിൾ നേച്ചർ ഓഫ് ദ ഫോൺ അപ്പൊ സോ ഇൻ ഫ്ലെക്സിബിൾ ഇലക്ട്രോണിക്സ് we need substance which are bendable stretchable foldable and every sort of things right so we uh, so so from this characterization we have we have drawn the conclusion that our form can be applicable in flexible electrons so just uh, to know uh, whether you know if we squeeze the form squeeze the form down whether it can retrace back to its original position so we have done a mechanical test known as a stress strain analysis i know that since you are electronics and communication students you don't you won't be bothering about this one so i am not much explaining about this i'll just give a rough idea about this so yeah and i have measured the porosity of the form because you know the porosity of the form was measured and it was found to be 80 percentage and so 80 percentage porosity means that it is consisting of 80 percentage of air whereas only 20 percentage of it it is having the pdms polar so we can say that since most of the portion of the uh, majority of the po- of the portion of the form is air so on compression the air squishes out so on compression the air comes out and it gets compressed you know so we have done a stress strain analysis for one loading cycle that is i have loaded the form till 20 kilopascal and then released it, it to the original position so figure a represents that of the graphene quartered b graphene embedded and c graphene coated and embedded so from the figure we can see that all the three forms retraces back to this original position so that we can use it in multiple times and here i have prepared a table for the two types of forms that is 2 mm and 4 mm ones and from the table it's clear that the graphene coated forms are having a higher strain percentage you might be knowing what is strain right strain is the rate of change of length or the displacement with respect to the original original length okay so it's having a higher strain percentage of 82.7 percentage that is that is it has a higher rate of displacement that is it's less stiffer or it's more squeezable when compared to the graphene embedded and the graphene coated and embedded so from that we can see that when graphene is present inside the material it provides an additional mechanical strength to the material while it is present outside the material so that was one of the conclusion that we drawn from this test now i'll just give an idea about the internal mechanism of each form 
figure one represents the compressed as well as uncompressed as well as the compressed situation of the bond. So the lower figure, the second, the second figure of figure one itself shows two portions. That's figure the inset A and inset B, where inset A shows the uncompressed situation and inset B shows the compressed situation. So in figure B, we have shown the compressed as well as the uncompressed situation of the three types of forms. So for, firstly, the graphene coated forms. So we have told that in graphene coated forms means the graphene flakes are present on the pores. That is, is graphene is present on the outer circle of the pores. And we say that graphene the flakes are not present the metrics the pores. They are not present in 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 the pores. So what happens is that as pressure is applied on the material, then we have pressure applied to the pores. Then we have the pores in the pores. Then we have the pores in the pores. Then we have the pores in the oval shape. Then we have the oval shape in the pores. Some of the graphene flakes might be separate from each other. Or some might be in small contact area with each other. In uncompressed state. Then we have the small contact area with each other. In uncompressed state. Then we have the uncompressed state. Then we have the small contact area with each other. Formula can be some of the compressor a board if the graphene flex slide is a this graphene flex slide in such a way that it increases the contact area with other flex up as the contact area increases what happens the park that there, ha there happens to be the formation of percolation networks and the core ना कोरे ग्राफीन फ्लेक्सिंग ने उड़ी मिच्छे उड़ी मिच्छे उड़ी मिच्छे मुट्टी 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 निकले अपन इंद्र संभव है कि ना द इलेक्ट्रॉन्स कैन जंप थ्रू दिस ग्राफीन फ्लेक्स टू फॉर टू इंक्रीज द कंडक्टिविटी सो दैट्स व्हाट हैपेंस इन द ग्राफीन पॉटेड फॉर्म्स नेक्स्ट इस ये PDMS मैट्रिक्स नहीं आते, अलग ना नंगे ये पॉलीमर ना आते, तो ये ग्राफीन ही टेकर, अलग। अपन इंद्र संभव इगेना ये औरो ग्राफीन फ्लेक्स ने छुट्टी नम और PDMS पोटिंग करन। अपन वाइल वी कंप्रेस इट, अपन नमले ग्राफ नमले दिने कंप्रेस चाहिए बोर, the graphene flakes doesn't come in direct contact with each other because of the PDMS barrier that is present between the graphene flakes, अलग। But according to the literature or according to the theory, there happens to be a channeling effect. Between these two graphene flakes through this PDMS barrier, if the graphene flakes are less than two nanometer distance, अपन तो नमला कंबर्स जेह देते ये रंड ग्राफीन फ्लेक्स टू नैनोमीटर डिस्टेंस ले कोरो आना नरने गिल इलेक्ट्रॉन्स कैन चैनल थ्रू दिस पीडीएमएस बैरियर अब आउट एक चैनलिंग इफेक्ट आना होना तो नमला पारण्यो इन ग्राफीन पॉटेड वंस परकुलेशन नेटवर्क what happens is that a channeling is happening and hence conduction happens. And these two effects is being collectively happening in graphene cotton and embedded form. But in the section that the percolation happens in under, in other words, the next channeling happens in under. But from the literature, we have a concept of conductivity. Conductivity increases as a concentration of graphene increases. But after a particular threshold value, conductivity remains the same or conductivity almost reduces. Above, we should be aware that the graphene coated and embedded form would be having a concentration of graphene which is less than the threshold. Our concept on diary. Now, Moving on to the sensor. अपन नमल अंदर चेदा था इग्र इफ 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 फॉर्म्स नमल आदमी ए फॉर्म्स ओन डाकी इन्हें आ फॉर्म्स ने उनका कैरेक्टराइज़ चेदो इन्हें टाइम नमल आई ने सैंडविच चेया हम बोलना था सेंसर आका मिली था. So now figure A represents the sensor structure. Figure A represents the sensor structure. That is, the graphene-based porous forms are being sandwiched between two carbon electrodes separated by a PET layer. PET in organic are just a thin and the plastic layer and insulator at actina to just reduce the you know the fringing capacitance reduce the amount of the actina upon the number of it and the carbon electrode in the air day let them go to PET layer or the body air form in a and I'm kicked in a power form in a P by layer in the brain and the layer on the law our dielectric material in the full in a number of issues if you can only render and electrodes in the day or a dielectric material in the number of our again and again it consists of that form as well as the PET layer layer then what we have done is that we have measured the average initial capacitance of this devices uh, of this uh, of the six types of devices and plotted a graph 
other. <clears throat> so I have told earlier that for each device, I have taken two mm ones as well as four mm ones. So we have brought the initial capacitance graph, and from this graph, it's clear that the graphene potted ones and is having a higher capacitance when compared to the graphene when compared to the other ones for in case of two mm ones. Yeah, I'll just give it generally here. We have considered two ty two types of forms that is two mm ones and four mm ones. So it's clear from the graph that two mm ones are having a high initial capacitance when compared to the four mm ones. Yes, it satisfies the uh, the simple uh, parallel capacitance equations, which is given by the equation C is equal to epsilon a by d. That is, for two mm ones, d is two mm, and for four mm ones, the d is four mm. So as d decreases, c increases. So we, it's clear that the two mm ones is having a higher capacitance when compared to the four mm ones, right? So from the figure, it's clear that. Uh, the two mm ones, the graphene coated ones, are having a higher capacitance, whereas for the four mm ones, the graphene embedded ones, as well as is high, have, having a higher capacitance. Now, we have started loading these forms. So, for loading these forms, we have a test stand which which applies the pressure, as well as an LCI meter which collects the capacitance or which measures the capacitance. So here, I have increased the force from zero to, tw to 12 kilopascal for each device and have plot and I have plotted this curve. And from this, I'm not uh, so sorry. I'm not explaining much about this graph because it would be too much boring for you guys. So from this graphs, it's clear that, you know, um, as as the pressure increases, the capacitance increases. And we can see that the graphene coated ones is having a higher range in capacitance when compared to the graphene embedded ones and the graphene coated. So this happens because you know, as as we apply the pressure onto that onto that material. So as we apply pressure onto that material, at low pressure regions, the pores start closing, closing, closing up to something like six kilopascal. Almost at almost at six kilopascal, all the pores get closed. And after that, if we increase the pressure the PDMS material would be getting compressing and this causes the increase in capacitance. We have a porous form. Now, we have a form of the dishwashing. We have a little squeeze. We have a little squeeze. We have a little material. 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 We have Six kilo pascal where an amala, I know squeeze a ball and the sample can other e air le, e air, no e air, nere, even I material nothing, porto to chadam, porto to chadi, chadam and the sample can arrive up, epsilon change I, ale, nechina air porto to an ele, air nor genial, epsilon, epsilon of air is less than epsilon of PDMS of air, ne, number PDMS on the replace G and boa, up epsilon increase G, which in the relative permittivity increase A, which in a hang and a capacitance of increase A, which in the six kilopascal very aggregation air post closed down. Adinisha and the Sambogina Chinia, PDMS maximum tri GM betum, and the structure collapse up other, and the other maximum tri chair at elastic region in a near a plastic region like Mugina, Chias, Ramiki. Young put the mechanical paranilla, Adumandana, but Satya Marin and the Sambogan number hooks low and out of the hooks low in a career equilo. Stress is directly proportional to strain. A particular area where stress is strain wide proportional, other than the elastic region in the brain. After that region or a proportionality limit, a game and the Sambogan or in the Cherudite and elasticity Nastapadan Thorongo, other than a number of band is stretchy over Sambogan, elasticity Nastapadan Thorongo, in other plastic region like a movie. Slayer. She the low pressure application lies on a plastic region like a number of forms of ponilla, number of But twenty picula pascal could the number of trichy wine automatically it will be going to the plastic region and it won't be durable in nature. In the next one, in the sensors name number and the chain of durable ano in the chair number for example in um and the number 
ഡേ ടു ഡേ ലൈഫ് അല്ലെന്ന് പറഞ്ഞു ഇനിയിപ്പോ നമ്മൾ അതൊരു ഇത് ഈ റിയൽ ടൈം ആപ്ലിക്കേഷൻ നമ്മൾ വെക്കുവാണെന്നുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ രണ്ടു ദിവസം ഉപയോഗിച്ചിട്ട് കഴിഞ്ഞ് നമുക്ക് ത്രോ ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റില്ല നമുക്ക് അത് കൂടുതൽ ഒരു ഫോർ എക്സാമ്പിൾ നമുക്ക് ഒരു വൺ ഇയറിലേക്ക് നമുക്ക് യൂസ് ചെയ്യണം അങ്ങനെയാണ് നമ്മൾ പ്ലാൻ ചെയ്യുന്നതെന്നുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ ഇറ്റ് ഷുഡ് ബി റിപ്പീറ്റബിൾ ഇൻ നേച്ചർ റൈറ്റ് സോ ആ റിപ്പീറ്റബിൾ ഇൻ നേച്ചർ ആണോ എന്നറിയാൻ വേണ്ടിട്ട് വി ഹാവ് ട്രൈഡ് വിത്ത് ഹൺഡ്രഡ് സൈക്കിൾസ് ഹൺഡ്രഡ് റിപ്പീറ്റിംഗ് സൈക്കിൾസ് ഓഫ് സുറോട്ടിൽ ഫോർ ഫിലോപാസ്കിൽ ആൻഡ് വി ഗോട്ട് ദാറ്റ് ഓൾ ദ ഫോംസ് ആർ റിപ്പീറ്റബിൾ ഇൻ നേച്ചർ മനസ്സിലെ അപ്പൊ ഹൺഡ്രഡ് സൈക്കിൾസ് നമ്മൾ ജസ്റ്റ് ട്രൈ ചെയ്തു ഇറ്റ്സ് ജസ്റ്റ് ട്രയൽ ആൻഡ് ഇറ്റ്സ് റിപ്പീറ്റബിൾ ആൻഡ് വി പ്രൂവ് ദാറ്റ് ഇറ്റ്സ് റിപ്പീറ്റബിൾ ഇൻ നേച്ചർ ദൻ മൂവിംഗ് ഓൺ ടു ദ ആപ്ലിക്കേഷൻസ് സോ ഫസ്റ്റ് ഐ ജസ്റ്റ് ട്രൈ വിത്ത് ടാപ്പിംഗ് ഫിംഗേഴ്സ് ആ സെൻസറേല് അതാണ് നമ്മുടെ സെൻസർ കേട്ടോ ആ സെൻസറേൽ ആദ്യമേ ഒരു ടാപ്പ് കൊടുത്തു ഫിംഗർ കൊണ്ട് ഒരു സിംഗിൾ ടാപ്പ് കൊടുത്തു അതായിട്ട് രണ്ട് കോൺസെക്യൂട്ടീവ് ടാപ്പ് കൊടുത്തു അതായിട്ട് മൂന്ന് കോൺസെക്യൂട്ടീവ് ടാപ്പ് കൊടുത്തു ദെൻ ആസ് സച്ച് ഐ ഇൻക്രീസ് ടിൽ ഫൈവ് ടാപ്സ് സോ ഇറ്റ്സ് ക്ലിയർ ഫ്രം ദ പിക്ചർ ദാറ്റ് ദ കെപ്പാസിറ്റൻസ് ഇസ് ബീങ് മെഷർഡ് അക്രോസ് ദ ടൈം ആൻഡ് ദ ഫൈവ് ടാപ്സ് ഹാസ് ബീ ഇസ് ബീങ് ഡിറ്റക്റ്റഡ് ബൈ ദ സെൻസർ നോ ദ നെക്സ്റ്റ് ഇസ് എ മെറ്റ കപ്പൽ മൂവ്മെന്റ് ഓഫ് മെറ്റ കപ്പൽ മൂവ്മെന്റ് So, the sensor was attached to the, you know, the metacarpal region. That's why we have to put the hand in the hand. We have to put the hand in the hand. We have to fold the hand. നമ്മൾ കൈ അടയ്ക്കുകയും തുറക്കുകയും അടയ്ക്കുകയും തുറക്കുകയും ചെയ്തു അപ്പം അടയ്ക്കുകയും തുറക്കുകയും ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ എന്താണ് സംഭവിക്കുന്നത് എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞു കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ അവിടെ നമുക്ക് ബോൺസിന്റെ മൂവ്മെന്റ് ഉണ്ട് അല്ലേ അപ്പൊ ആ ബോൺസിന്റെ മൂവ്മെന്റിന് അനുസരിച്ച് ആ ആ സെൻസർ ഡിറ്റക്ട് ചെയ്തു ആ ബോൺസിന്റെ മൂവ്മെന്റിനെ അപ്പൊ റിലാക്സ് ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ എന്താ സംഭവിക്കുന്നത് എന്ന് വെച്ച് കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ എന്താ ബോൺസ് റിലാക്സ് സിറ്റുവേഷൻ ആണ് അപ്പൊ കപ്പാസിറ്റൻസ് കുറവായിരിക്കും നമ്മൾ ഫോൾഡ് ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ ബോൺസ് ഒന്നും മെല്ലെ ഇങ്ങനെ ഒന്ന് ചെറുതായിട്ടൊന്ന് പൊങ്ങും അപ്പൊ കപ്പാസിറ്റൻസ് ഇൻക്രീസ് ചെയ്യും a small change in the bone at a small change ala small movement vera sensor detect cheyidu ini next one is abdominal movement the abdominal movement nu cheyya it's just a respiratory movement by measuring by using the waist belt nu cheyya waist belt inde edayile sensor vechukonde nammala respiratory inhalation um exhalation um nadathi nu cheyya shwasam agathottu eduthu shwasam porathottu eduthu angane respiratory rate measure cheyidu so we could see that you know it can measure slow rates as well as fast rates now last was the, was the throat movement for the throat movement i just attached the sensor over the throat and i just drank water so so and and then measure the capacitance so in the in the figure in the second figure we can see 1 2 and 3 1 represents the stage at i drink a little bit of water 2 represents the stage at which i drank a bit more of water and 3 represents the stage that i i drank a bit much more of water so depending upon the quantity of water i swallowed the sensor was able to detect detect, detect the pressure applied on it in terms of capacitance now this from this study we can uh, we can get the conclusion that these graphene based porous forms were fabricated using just simple and low cost sugar templating method so we can claim that it's a low cost and simple method as we took the sugar templates which we buy from the grocery shops and these graphene based porous have a higher porosity of 80% that is majority of its having air so it's ultra lightweight in nature squeezable in nature and bendable in nature and these forms are having a higher sensitivity within the range 0 to 6 kPa with a lower limit of detection of 550 Pa so i have just yeah, i have just I, i didn't include that uh, that portion also because you know i have just calculated the snr ratio of these forms and got the lower limit of detection of 50 Pa and uh, from the repeatability test we can see that it's durable in nature and the potential applications demonstrate its real world opportunities now moving on to the collaboration collaborations and the future work so i'm having collaborations with, with three companies so my first collaborator is that i have been fabricated these forms for the queensland veterinary health um, veterinary health where you know uh, circular circular forms these circular sensors i myself fabricate using sugar granules not from sugar templates so i just put these sugar granules into that into that small circular molds and fabricate these devices and these are being tested and these are being used for testing uh, you know the heartbeat rate of horses in the in the veterinary department and studies are being going on and so we have uh, we are using these sensors to detect the heart heart rate of horses by fitting these devices on the foot of the horse 
and second one my collaborator is a, it's a it's, it's a company known as calix so for them i just optimize these devices um and in the second case also i just fabricate my own devices rather than using uh you know the sugar plate that i uh, that i get from outside and then fabricate these devices for this company and for the third one is is a collaboration with a german company where i just fabricate some optical sensors in collaboration with some with uh, with a few st other students as well so now so that's the end almost the end now moving on to the acknowledgement slide so i convey my special thanks again to the coordinator mr anupasavan to all the staff and students of ec department as well as the management of mahaguru institute of technology and thank you so much for the patience for hearing me <laughs> and that's all so i'm happy to case any questions or doubts or anything that you're having hello 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 ma'am can you hear me ipam yes ma'am keka ഞങ്ങൾ റിസർച്ച് തിരിയണെങ്കിൽ എന്തേലും നമുക്ക് റിസർച്ചിൽ തിരിയണമെന്നുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ നിങ്ങൾക്ക് ആദ്യമേ ഒരു ബാച്ച് ബാച്ചിലേഴ്സ് കഴിഞ്ഞിട്ട് മാസ്റ്റേഴ്സ് എടുക്കണം മാസ്റ്റേഴ്സ് എടുത്ത് കഴിഞ്ഞിട്ട് നിങ്ങൾക്ക് നിങ്ങൾക്ക് സ്റ്റാർട്ട് ചെയ്യണം നിങ്ങൾക്ക് റിസർച്ച് യെസ് മാം താങ്ക്യൂ മാം ഓക്കെ എൻ സ്ലൈഡ്സ് ലെ എന്തെങ്കിലും ഡൗട്ട് ഉണ്ടോ ഞാൻ സ്റ്റോപ്പ് ഷെയറിംഗ് കൊടുക്കട്ടെ എങ്ങനെയാ I express my heartfelt gratitude to our principal Manju ma'am, our college management and the program coordinator Anup Vasan sir for arranging such a valuable webinar on flexible capacity pressure sensors which are becoming more and more relevant nowadays. I especially thank our resource person Lakshmi ma'am for spending her valuable time to provide us with the knowledge on flexible capacity pressure sensors. I also thank all the students who are present here and made this webinar a success. Thank you so much.